strange implications of what he is doing are no different than the propaganda campaign that Hitler and his Nazi unit carried on in Germany that ended up eliminating uh, six million Jewish people. Now what is most interesting is that Hitler said the very same thing. He said, number one, that the Jews were genetically inferior to the Aryans. If one believes that the German people would have tolerated the concentration camps and the gas chambers, if news media like uh, the programs that Mr. Brown is setting on, if those people were willing to bring uh, discordant views out into the open, I don't believe the concentration camps and the gas chambers could have continued to exist in Germany. Back in the 70s, a man named Dr. William Shockley, a noted scientist, embarked upon the mission of proving to the world that black people are genetically inferior, without, I might add, the benefit of any formal background in genetics. He became front page news and won headlines with his controversial views. On campus after campus, unrest followed his every visit. My position then and now is that if a supremacist cannot be rationally debated, perhaps he has a point. After the debate you're now going to see, Dr. Shockley went back into oblivion. I don't claim that the 1973 interview did it alone, but I am of the opinion that it helped. I'm Tony Brown. In a moment, racial superiority with Dr. William Shockley. We have two very prominent educators, scholars on Black Journal tonight, and we feel that it is important to defend the First Amendment rights of all Americans. Dr. William Shockley, one of our guests, has had quite a difficult time speaking at some universities, and particularly some black college students do not agree with his theories. On Black Journal, we feel that Dr. Shockley's rights in the First Amendment area are parallel to black people's rights. That is, that Dr. Shockley must have a platform for his views if black people are to have a platform for their views. Dr. Francis Welsing, on the other side, has difficulty in expressing her views on legitimate mass media outlets because many whites do not agree with her theory of genetics. Now, let's find out what the controversy is about. Dr. Shockley, please give us the benefit, basically, of what your theory is. My uh, principal point, uh, Mr. Brown, is uh, not so much a theory of black-white differences, but is summed up in one word, which is the theme of my appearance on your program and my efforts, and the word is dysgenics. And dysgenics means, effectively, downbreeding, retrogressive evolution. And I fear that this is worst for the black community, and I particularly welcome an opportunity to appear on Black Journal just for these reasons. And let me say also that when I first met Dr. Welsing, it was not black students who were disrupting, but white students. And Dr. Welsing made a very sincere and I thought extremely effective effort, a well-planned effort. It was not effective with these white students at Staten Island Community College, so I would have a chance to speak. In fact, I think they prevented her from saying what she wanted to say when she was trying to uh, gain me a platform. So my main theme is that we have problems that we should face and we should look at connected with dysgenics, and I welcome any opportunity I have to bring this out so that people can look at it and worry about it. Dr. Shockley, you are accused of having a theory uh, that is uh, a racist, a white racist theory. How do you respond to that? Well, I respond to that by saying that I've considered whether or not I am a racist. Racist is an epithet that used to damage my self-esteem, but it doesn't anymore. I feel it's untrue. If you look in the dictionary as to what racist means, it means uh, emotional feelings, irrational feelings associated with fear and hate. If I really had those, I don't think I would be here this evening. I feel that uh, what I'm engaged in is a demand for diagnosis. And I'd like to say some more about this chart, which we'll, we'll come to probably later, which shows the disproportionate rates of reproduction for the least effective elements of the black community. I'd like to say more about that than we should in just this brief introduction. But uh, I think there is another word that better describes what I'm involved in, and that word is raceology, which means a scientific analysis of racial differences. And I uh, basically, I have a faith that reason is a good thing, and I feel, uh, as you do about the First Amendment, but maybe with a slightly different emphasis. I think the really important thing about the First Amendment is it is a way of guaranteeing a high likelihood the truth will emerge as a result of conflict, conflicting ideas being expressed, and I have a thesis and a basic belief the truth is a good thing and will be of benefit to man. Thank you. Dr. Francis Welsing, give us the benefit of your theory, please. 
Well, my theory was, I wrote the paper in 1969, I wrote a paper called The Crest Theory of Color Confrontation and Racism. And the sole reason behind writing that paper was an attempt to understand the behavior of white people in relationship to all people of color, every place in the world, black, brown, red, and yellow people. And the paper was presented to the Americans at the National Medical Association, the section on psychiatry in neurology, because back in 1969, uh, the black caucus in the American Psychiatric Association, we had said that racism, and when we talk about racism, we're talking about the white supremacy behavior of white people that racism was the number one mental health problem in the nation and it was the number one cause of other mental health problems. And I wanted to understand what this thing of racism really is all about because it's the kind of, it is the thing that has caused woe and misery and suffering for the vast majority of the people on this planet that are classified as non-white. And in my attempt to understand why the necessity of white people to keep saying that white is superior and that the condition of non-white is inferior. And the more I thought about it, in conjunction with uh, an idea that a friend of mine had that racism was a worldwide behavioral system for the maintenance of white supremacy by a small minority of people. I put those ideas together with what we know about genetics, what we know about the condition of skin whiteness itself. The condition of skin whiteness is the genetic inability to produce skin pigment called melanin. This is a genetic recessive trait. It is a genetic deficiency state, not as defined by Francis Welsing, but defined by geneticists and dermatologists that the inability to produce the skin pigment of melanin or melanin pigment is described as albinism. And I think that white people even though most white people are not consciously understanding their problem in genetics, they are certainly aware that they are genetically dominated by people of color. That's why it was a statement, one, one drop of black blood makes you black, because people of color have the genetic capacity to annihilate white people. And so unless white people control the reproductivity of people of color, then we have, we can postulate that perhaps one day there won't be any white people. And I think that the very survival of white people necessitates that they project genetic inferiority on people of color because it is they who really are aware that they are genetic recessive and perhaps genetically inferior to people of color. And I am not saying this to to call uh, the condition of skin whiteness to say, well, no, white people are inferior. I'm not saying it for that purpose, but I think that it is of prime importance for the majority of people in the world to understand why it is that white people have to, the effective majority, large numbers of white people, have to move in a hostile and an aggressive way against people of color and have to constantly focus on, it's you who's genetically inferior because they realize that there's something wrong with their genetic status. Now, now. May what? I take a call? Oh, sure, All right. please. Let, let me, uh, so that, because uh, we have a number of calls, and we'll see what the public wants to find That's out so. also. Just one second. Hello, go ahead, please. You're on Black Journal. Yes, thank you. I would, I would like to ask the question, why does the doctor feel that his theory, Dr. Shockley, why does, why does you feel that your theory is correct? Well, let me say that's a, um, a long question. Let me point out one aspect. Uh, I mean, it's a, a question that calls for a very long answer. Uh, I think I might just at this point say that in a time like one hour, we may expose a problem and encourage thinking about it, and this is a very valuable thing. But to uh, cover either Dr. Welsing's views or mine, and let me say here are just to show that these things exist, is a pamphlet that she was good enough to give me some time ago. Uh, they this one's upside the, down. Well, that one's upside down. Yeah, Thank you. Right. <laughs> um, and this is uh, one of my own. It's actually a collection of a, de of a debate. The imperative of ethnic education is yours. Uh, this is the issue of the journal. Mine was, uh, the title of my uh, paper is somewhat different from this, but I want to say uh, that speaking for myself, if people would like to write to me at Stanford University, I have a post box there, post box S, which is the same as Shockley and Stanford. I will try to supply more information, and I'm sure Dr. Welsing will say what she can do about making, uh, telling people how to reach her pamphlet. Okay. But now let me say this chart that I held up a moment ago is very important in respect to this question of why I think 
uh, there may be what proves a basic difference, but I'm going to say that if there were not a basic difference in uh, intellectual capacity in the past, there probably will be a basic difference between black and white intellectual capacity in the future simply because of the reproduction patterns. And these are Census Bureau data, and this is the most threatening aspect. And what it indicates is that for the black women of the lowest intellectual social class, uh, which are rural farm women, generally the education is least, the average number of children is 5.4. For women with um, <clears throat> college degrees, it's 1.9. And um, so this is definitely unfavorable. It is, it is reproducing far more at the bottom end and not enough to keep even at the top end. Dr. Shockley, can for you whites, explain? Uh, let me just finish uh -huh. this. For whites, the numbers are also in this direction, but nowhere nearly as, uh, as severe. Dr. Shockley, I think that uh, in all fairness, you should explain to the audience why it is that you have, first of all, you have a very large segment of the black population who are uh, on farms, who are deprived in cities. Why don't you explain at the time that you're showing this, why, who is keeping black people in a situation like they're in? I mean, it could be, you could turn it around the other way where you could have very large numbers of black people who are exposed to educational opportunities like white people who are exposed to housing, who are exposed, exposed to health facilities. Why don't you explain that at the same time that you put well, figures I'm, I'm like sure that? I'm sure you would explain it uh, no, but to I Dr. Think Welsing, it's important but uh, one must say time. first things first. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you've raised the basic question there, and that is whether the disadvantages are primarily a lack of opportunity or whether they are primarily a basic genetic difference. And let me mention one thing, which is that in certain areas there is no doubt about black superiority. Blacks are superior in visual acuity and they're superior in a systematic way. Now, I, uh, I don't expect that people will understand the details of this, but I simply want to show that quantitative work can be done. This happens to be a research job of my own. And what it shows, because these points that you see here lie on a, on a line, which is not the, the central line, but they lie systematically on a line, what it says is that so far as visual acuity is concerned, blacks are systematically better than whites. It's as if their bell-shaped curve, their distribution curve, were pushed upwards compared to whites for visual acuity, or at least for the avoidance of bad eyesight, such that if the same shift occurred for IQ, it would mean that the average IQ distribution would be up by nine points rather than down by about 15 points, which is the typical average. Dr. Shockley, visual acuity is probably something that the system of white supremacy has not necessarily seen the need to affect the environment that black people are in so that it will alter the fact that they have visual acuity that is superior to whites. The fact of visual acuity is not attacked in the same way as educational opportunity and job performance is attacked. And I think but that it, this it's, is... It's evidence for a genetic difference, in Well, my you see opinion. what I'm saying? There might be many, many more genetic right. differences where people of color Fine. appear superior. If I may, we have a number of people and we'd like to get to as many as possible. If you could make your answers, as, not to compromise your explanation, <laughs> right. but if you could make your answers as succinct, I would appreciate it because we'd like to okay. involve the public as much as we can. One moment, please. Your unbacked back journal, go ahead, please. Yes, I was wondering if Dr. Shockley could oh. explain the basic difference between his, the course he is taking in explaining white supremacy <laughs> and the course that Hitler took in, in, uh, during the Nazism reign. Thank you. Well, there are enormous differences. In fact, uh, the lesson to be learned from Nazi history is frequently very misunderstood. And it is a lesson which Mr. Brown has told us about earlier. It's the First Amendment. It's not that eugenics is intolerable. Actually, the eugenic programs, which are the opposite of dysgenics, uh, eugenic programs uh, are not inconceivable. They're not inhumane. Denmark has been carrying out programs with strong eugenic implications for maybe 30 years. And it's important to note that since World War II, Denmark's per capita homicide rate dropped and is now approximately 1 20th. That is, the number of deaths of probability being killed in a year by, uh, by a violent homicide is roughly, oh, the order of 100 times less 
for young Danes than it is for young American blacks. Can I? Now, the, uh, uh, but the lesson, let me say, what uh, the, the lesson of Nazi history we have in this country, and it will protect us. It's just the thing that makes this program possible. The First Amendment, which allows freedom of speech. If one believes that is not the right answer, then one has to be one of the most anti-German racists that can be. If one believes that the German people would have tolerated the concentration camps and the gas chambers, if news media, like uh, the programs that Mr. Brown is setting on, if those people were willing to bring uh, discordant views out into the open, I don't believe the concentration camps and the gas chambers could have continued to exist in Germany. I'd like to comment because I'd like to say that I don't think that there's a major difference between what Dr. Shockley is doing. I don't think that Dr. Shockley is fully aware of what he is doing and why he is doing what he's doing. But the long-range implications of what he is doing are no different than the propaganda campaign that Hitler and his Nazi unit carried on in Germany that ended up eliminating uh, six million Jewish people. Now what is most interesting is that Hitler said the very same thing. He said, number one, that the Jews were genetically inferior to the Aryans. Number two, he was aware that the Semites had genetically dominant material uh, genetic material to the Aryans. And if we begin to understand the way that people who were in Europe at the time that the Semites arrived from Africa, when the Semites arrived in Europe from Africa, they were people who had substantial amounts of color and who had very kinky hair because they were from the continent of Africa. And the Europeans, the white people who were there, had a reaction, a color reaction, to the Semites that is no different than the reaction and the concern on the part of people who are white in this area of the world or any other area of the world to people who, are, who have the genetic capacity to produce color, who can genetically annihilate their position. And I think it's very, very important, even though Dr. Shockley, I am convinced that Dr. Shockley believes that he is uh, perhaps elevating science with all of his charts and all of his figures, but he doesn't understand the things that propel him as a white individual in a social system that has programmed him throughout his life and programmed large numbers of people like him to focus on the genetics of people of color in such a way as to destroy people of color. I would like to ask a question and Dr. Shockley, if you could answer it, uh, yes or no, I would appreciate it. Do you believe that black people are inferior in intelligence because of their heredity? I have a standard statement. It is not yes or no. It's memorized. I say at the same time every, every time, I think. What I say is this. My research leads me, and it's a tragic conclusion, really. Uh, my research leads me inescapably to the opinion that the major cause of the American Negro's intellectual and social deficits is hereditary and racially genetic in origin, and thus not remediable to a major degree by practical improvements in environment. All right. If you believe that uh, the position relatively of black Americans to white Americans is based on a genetic inferiority, and I will, I will accept the responsibility for that word, uh, then what do you see as the solution to the problem? Well, I see the first uh, aspect of this is to prevent the problem from becoming worse by dysgenics. This first word that Would you I, uh, that translate I dysgenics what, what for I, me and the audience? Uh, what Would I that be sterilization? Is, is, no. Dysgenics, you see, means what that other chart I showed you says. Should blacks, but the least effective element. Should blacks be sterilized? Uh, no. I have a... Uh, this but if blacks gets are a the, problem and we, and we do not allow... This is inhumane. And Dr. I think Shockley one can find more humane to solutions to this. Well, then, then how would, then, then, then. I would propose something in which one of the key clauses, phrases, is regardless of sex, race, or welfare status. And this is the proposal. I call it a thinking exercise. It's mentioned in that pamphlet that I showed that you can obtain. Um, and it goes this way, that you would offer a bonus to everyone to be sterilized. Now, we know we have a population explosion problem. We know that in India that bonuses in the form of transistor radios would are offered this bonus to people. Be, or, would this bonus be directed to black people specifically, more Mr. than white? Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, what did I say just a moment ago? I said, regardless of sex, race, or welfare status. Now, there is a group, there is a group, of, I say, uh, there is a group of white people 
to whom this offer this, should be made also. Absolutely. Now the offer, will the, the offer is based, the offer is based upon the best estimates, best scientific estimates that one can have of any genetically carried disabilities. Now there is some I think that any humane person would have no doubt about. And uh, Dr. Welsing talked about dominant and recessive genes. I want to point out that sometimes a dominant gene can be a very bad thing, and it is a very bad thing for color. a neurological disease called <coughs> Huntington's chorea, which is something which like is multiple more prominent sclerosis. In white people than black people. That is correct. And mm -hmm. I think that one should offer a large bonus for anyone who might be Dr. potentially Shockley. carrying Huntington's chorea. Dr. Shockley, Beyond are this, you it goes on with some other factors in this. But Dr. Welsing wishes are you, to speak. Are you aware that white people have more genetic diseases that affect their nervous system than people of color, than black people? I wouldn't be at all surprised. And I think now, blacks have suggest, uh, apparently would you have suggest higher heart that all of these, Would you suggest that all of these white people who are carrying these defective genes, you know, whose families may carry these defective genes, that they be examined and su it would be suggested to them that they be sterilized? Would you suggest this? Yes, I think I would, probably, in general. Go ahead, your own black journal, please. What we know about ancient black civilizations, how can American blacks suddenly be genetically regressive? Thank you. Let me, let me just say this. What is very interesting is um, in the study of biology, uh, biologists who have studied evolution, one of the very interesting things that they say is that the more functional skin pigment cells in the animal kingdom, the higher you are on the scale of phylogenetic ascension. In other words, nature in the course of evolution went to its highest state when it produced a cell that could produce pigment and that we were sliding backwards. The mutation to albinism is a step backwards in the, in the scale of evolution. Are you aware of that, Dr. Shockley? No, I'm not aware of that uh, particular one. I am aware of another basic genetic difference, and that is that the rate of maturation of a neurological system gets uh, longer and longer the more advanced the animal is. And there is, that is one of the items on the racial difference, that the neurological development of blacks is faster than whites. Black ba babies walk on the average a month earlier than white babies. And the period and of uh, gestation... And black are much more creative also than uh, white Dr. Wells, uh, Shockley, correct me uh, if I'm incorrect. Uh, didn't the Giselle schedule, which tested the intelligence of children, make a correlative, a correlative between intelligence and walking early? Yes. And I would think it probably would have been negative. No, no, it, no, it was positive. not. It was positive. Well, the, uh, the, the, the motor skills on the Giselle schedule indicated that earlier precocious walking children, there was a correlation between that and high intelligence. This may be true. Uh, it might be true within a group. I'm not sure of that. Well, maybe I, that, I know that yeah. there is a correlation in terms of... Uh, things earlier than walking in this at the six month stage uh, Nancy Bailey at Berkeley has established that uh, white children who come from the most advanced families and who later when they become older are out of the top at the first six months they are relatively retarded compared to children who are uh, from families uh, right. of less accomplishment and who don't go as far but this uh, so there are a, a number of these things certainly to be brought in Fine. but this uh, this uh, Giselle this, schedule is a very authentic accepted institutional uh, psychological and experiment. And so is the Nancy Bailey <laughs> early uh, test. I'd like to take another okay, call at this point. You're on Black Journal. Go ahead, please. Hello. Uh, this question is addressed to Dr. Welsing. First, I would like to say that Mr. Brown and Dr. Welsing just prove immediately Dr. Shockley's concept because here we have two highly intelligent, gifted people. And by getting this out of the way, Dr. Welsing, <laughs> wouldn't you agree that there is a strong genetic component to the inheritance of intelligence. Geneticists believe that 80% component is hereditary. Let me finish Dr. Welsing. And then also, I think the association of skin color with, in with intelligence is an erroneous concept. And I want your views on this. Isn't it true that the historic fate of black people, the, the, the uh, tragic deprivation, the conditions under which they were raised, any people raised under these conditions would have an hereditary evolutionary background which could lead to uh, poor capacity to generalize, to uh, conceptualize, to create, to be creative in the form field of ideas and develop other excellent attributes. Now this is not a racist idea. This could happen to any group who has a tragic history of the black people. Thank you. Uh, no, I do not feel that uh, there's any evidence to suggest that 80% of 
the ability to come to terms with your environment that ha that has to do with heredity i think that much of it has to do with the environmental opportunity that the genetic material is exposed to uh i think that if we look at the black people if we just take uh the black group and we look at those people who have been able to achieve and we look at their backgrounds, we will find that they have had substantial social and economic opportunities that maybe some of the segment of the black population has not had. We'll find the same thing in the white group. Those white people who have been socioeconomically deprived and at the bottom of the economic scale for whites, that these people are not performing in the same way that people who have extended socioeconomic opportunity. One of the very interesting things is that white women are now talking about women's liberation and they are looking at their performance relative to white men and they are they are saying and all of the spokesmen for white women and men and women are also saying that the reason that the white woman has less confidence in her performance and is not performing as well relatively speaking as the white male has been the attitudes within the white family as to the role of the woman versus the role of the man now what is interesting is that when white people are looking at the difference in the performance of the black of the white woman and the white man on IQ tests they can account for that on the basis of environmental influences however when they shift over into looking at whites relative to people of color somehow they want to drop that understanding and that awareness uh, it's been interesting uh, to say the least uh, I'm happy you had your say Dr. Shockley and Dr. Welsing I'm happy you had yours and thank you for being on Black Journal Tony Brown.